What's up everyone and welcome back to the Driver's Apex. If you're new to the channel, my name is Thomas Donahue and if you look to the left and to the right of me, you will see two BMWs, both of which are not working. And in today's video, we're going to talk about why this one's not working. So stay tuned and let's get this done. All right, guys, the car is on the ground, working on getting things prepped. So that side's prepped. This side is not yet prepped, but oh my God, this is what we're working on, right? There, and I can't wait for you to see it when there's more light. I actually don't think I need to remove the camber plate. And I don't know why I did this before, but it looks like as soon as I pop this drop link out, I can actually just drop the entire coilover assembly, measure everything, and then get it replaced. All right, so I loosened up the 18. This is a 17. There we go. So since the 18 down here is loosened, that holds the whole coil over strut assembly into place. You can then take, I hope, the entire coil over system out. I'm probably just gonna balance the brake assembly if possible, or bungee it. Put a little tension on this. I don't think we need a whole lot. Just a little something. There, that should hold. All right, so that should hold until I get back. But here's our coilover assembly. And I'm hopeful, obviously we can take all this off, but we've got to replace uh, the whole shock assembly in the housing here. So I've got to make sure our measurements are in point. So that's what we're going to do next, measure. Let's just start removing some of the parts. Good. There's still plenty of grease there. I do have some good quality grease. We can add some grease just to make sure. The shift boot is all kinds of messed up in here. But the big thing we want to work on is just understanding where our measurements are. So I need to know, I need to make sure, A, how long is everything here? That's probably number one measurement, right? Because this threads into here. So what is the total measurement of this? So let me get a measuring tape, cut that off, pull this off, and then we can be a little more accurate. All right, so the dust boot is off and lo and behold, we've got a bump stop that's destroyed and it doesn't make sense to run this bump stop. I mean, it's, you can see it's pretty trash. Went ahead and ordered more bump stops. Now, of course, there's a 12 mil and a 20 mil. I didn't know which one to get. Um, or even I didn't, let me go back. I didn't know that I needed to order a bump stop. And even if I knew that I needed to order a bump stop without actually having the shock out, I wouldn't have known what size it was, right? So that's where a digital caliper comes in handy and knowing that uh, it's a 20 mil uh, bump stop. So that's why it's important to have a digital caliper, but here to there, or even maybe there to there, because it's going to be easier to have it so that um, it's like straight, right? Because if it's like, if we're doing this kind of stuff, it may not be 100%. So what I wanna do is measure, take off, measure, take off, measure, take off, and then I can measure this whole thing. So if we're looking at this, it is pretty close to three and three quarters. Well, there's technically a 16th on that. Okay. All right, so I did a quick measurement here. So this is one and nine sixteenths. So one and nine sixteenths inches. And then once we do the math, that's three and 13 sixteenths, or 16 sixteenths, right, in an inch. So one half is eight sixteenths. So it's three and 13, three and 13 sixteenths. Try to get this separated. Perhaps I could have done this uh, with it in the car. I'm not 100% sure if I should have. We'll find out. Let's see if I can break this one. Let's try. Let's 
get a rough measurement. Just, we're gonna ballpark it. And we can do it like this and then assume, so that's 19 and 15 sixteenths. So 19 and 15 sixteenths inches long. Okay, so now. All right, so we're free. This is really for my memory. So this is the three and 13 16 from here to there's three and 13 16. So that's for me important to measure and remember. And then this one is four and an eighth. And then, okay, so let's do this and then four and one eighth inches is the other side. And that would be from here to there. So once we've got those two, we're pretty well figured out. All right. Well, it's like equidistant too. So the shock is separated, as you can see, from all the collars. Don't do like I did. Try to throw it all the way to the top. It's not going to work that way. It's got to come back out the bottom. I'm going to get these items clean. I did order, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, two new bump stops. These are 20 mil. Uh, I went ahead and measured. I didn't know that I needed them. I probably should have ordered them, but there's a 12 mil and a 20, and at the time, I didn't know. But when you look at this, it's quite mushroomed and destroyed, and I don't think it's worth compromising my M3 for a $4 part. And then while I was on the ISC website, I ordered as well two of these dust covers. I thought that probably was important as well. All this is going to get cleaned up. I'll get this cleaned up as well, make sure it's cleaned and lubed. I won't show any of that because it's kind of boring. But what I will show is the reassembly process. Now, I ordered the parts today, probably ship out tomorrow. ISC actually has really good customer service and they can get parts out pretty quick. Um, I'm not here to dog their stuff, right? I've had two blown shocks already. I don't know what that means. I guess it could happen with anything or any, whatever. Um, but I'm not here to dog them. But I probably will in the future. Maybe once I convert the car, if I do convert the car to a six speed and put a carbon fiber air box, stuff like that in there that I'll upgrade to like PC Kleins or Owens or something like that. But I will show the whole reassembly process. I think that's important, but we're not gonna have this in the car for probably four days. Ugh. So I'll see you back in a minute when everything's going back together. All right, guys, let's take a look at how bad that looks. Holy moly. All right, so let's take Ooh, my. Have to get the bearing. Jeez. That looks horrific. Wow, there's a lot of grime in there. All right. 
Holy cow. Yeah, look at that, guys. So all of this somehow wound its wound up in the uh, the strut mount on the strut bearing. But yeah, you can see that was complete devastation. This car rode so bad. Ironically, this bump stop's not hateful. Um, it's chewed up a little bit, but compared to the other one, not too bad. So I'm just gonna disassemble this one as well. I don't think you guys are super excited to see that happen. Oh my gosh, this is really bad. This is quite bad. We're just going to mock this up for now, at least I can kind of put a lot of this back in the car for now. And then just let it sit until I'm ready. And then all I need to do is just pop this off and I'll put the dust cover and, well actually the bump stop and the dust cover on. I could probably drive the one or two, but I don't think it's a good idea. for sure so we'll just put this 19 back on I already bought a new 19 so we're not going to reuse this particular 19 but at least we'll have everything kind of buttoned up lightly this happens sometimes I could instead just get a socket wrench much tension this needs to be completely tightened down as well so that we don't lose our alignment specs i don't want to lose those that would suck all right guys so we got what we needed i see a smudge on the camera that camera's taken a beating specifically that lens especially with all the welding it's thrown up a lot of stuff so we've got our dust boot covers nice and flexible as well as our 20 mil bump stuff so what that means is i just need to disassemble the top lower Put this on that on put it back together drop the car go for a ride and then we'll talk about how much of a difference i feel stuff like that so let me get this done. Wow, the camera's crooked. I don't care. I'm tired. It's like 99 degrees in Tucson, but the car's back on the ground. As you can see, it looks a little high in the front. That makes sense, of course, right? I think the shocks are gonna have to break in and settle a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'll bring you along, kind of give my thoughts on how it rides and feels compared to what it was before. It was ridiculous. It literally felt like an ox cart. Fingers crossed, it drives better. So let's get it started. Oh heard my nut fall. I dropped a nut in the engine bin. I just heard it fall. So I'm gonna try and go back later and see if I can't get it. So far, the car feels good. What we need to make sure is over the bumps, does it feel good? That's the million dollar question. But so far, so good. Of course, we can't get on it because we're not even close to 210 degrees. But what I wanna know, is over the bumps, am I gonna notice a difference? There's one bump, not bad. Fingers crossed guys, I hope it feels softer. It's gotta feel softer, because it was driving like a bag of bricks. It was horrendous, absolutely horrendous. So there's a couple bumps up here that are horrible, or at least in the past were horrible for this particular car. We'll see how it feels on those bumps. Alignment seems fine. Just never know. And it's probably gonna ride a little bit stiff maybe up front for a minute until the stuff breaks in. That's really what I'm working on is, does it ride a little softer? It's a little bouncy up front, so I'm gonna have to soften it up a little bit. Let's see how it feels on this. 
this one. We won't know until we get around the roundabout, so I'll be right back. All right, so it's this bump up here that's gonna tell us everything, if it worked or if it didn't work. This is the bump. Oh, it still feels rough. It still rides so, so harsh still. It's better, but there's something about that bump in particular that's horrible, absolutely horrible, and I don't know what it is. But I felt it in the right rear. It almost even feels like the right rear shock now is taking a crap. But as a whole, everything feels pretty good. It feels soft. I'm just curious on these next couple bumps, but that, that one's rough every time. All right, guys, I'm done. Um, I don't even know if I turned the mic on actually today. Uh, the heat's killing me. But I think, actually, I know it worked. It rides infinitely better. What I needed to do was come back and tweak a little bit. So one firmer in the front. It did like one or two. It's hard to tell in the back because I'm using the little extenders. So I think right now I just need to get everything. My gosh, that sun is intense. I just need to get everything tweaked now, right? So everything was set up on an old system. So now it's just tweaking it for a new system. So here's what I learned. You gotta check your suspension. You gotta do it frequently, especially if your car is lowered and especially if you live somewhere where there are crap roads. It's really hard on the suspension. I didn't realize how bad the car was crashing up front until I drove today and felt how good it felt, right? Check your suspension. Hope you guys like this video. Stay tuned for more of this one sneak peek. Boom, look at that. Looks so much better, that's gonna get painted soon. I'm probably gonna break that up in two videos because there's so much content. I think it's impossible to put it in one video. So I'm gonna break it into part one, part two. So look for that soon. All right guys, see ya.